Could you imagine at some point in the far future, we will understand the brain with such exquisite precision and accuracy that the correlation between the feeling of beauty, the choice of colors that are being made by an aesthetic judgment, we understand the physical processes so well that correlate with all of those things that yes, we'll never say that they are the act of choice. They are the reason why Rembrandt chose blue or red, but we can say it is just a physical process that we understand completely well, and if we could look into the painter's head, we would actually know that they are choosing red at that moment, and that's the physical correlate of that choice. I grew up as a scientist recording brainstorms, recording electrical brainstorms, and trying to look into thousands of neurons and find exactly what you're talking about, the answer, the prediction of a behavior that is about to happen. So far, you can do for some things. You can do, for instance, for motor acts. You can, that's the reason we can link these days brains to machines and can use just electrical activity from human or animal brains to control directly the movements of a robotic device. Yet, when we go to exact the questions that you, you are raising, uh, I start wondering myself, as a neuroscientist, uh, not that I'm disputing your point that you know, the laws of physics, the brain has to obey the laws of physics, but to some degree, certain attributes that came with the degree of complexity of, that evolution endowed us may not be simply predicted by the same, you know, mechanisms that we use to apply to understand the universe that is up there. Because the universe that is between our ears, I dare to say in front of a famous theoretical physicist, is much more complex. <laughs> a, a small footnote, I would say that I completely agree with you. And the reason why I do physics is because it is so much simpler. Yeah. And, and I mean that quite seriously. And, 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 and we have I, been able in quantum mechanics to yeah. understand the behaviors of systems with a few particles. Exactly. And we can do that really well, and that's exciting. That's, but you give me something with all of the connections and particles inside the head, and there's no physicist alive that can do anything with that. And I, I'll just provoke you by saying that all this beautiful, and I'm a big fan of quantum mechanics and physics in general, although I'm, of course, just an amateur. But the beauty of it is all that you guys have done came from this, came from the biology that evolution produced. So I like to say, Amy, like that, that in, what is out here is the human universe, because it's an it's a epic told by the human brain. It's a reconstruction, the best we can. Science is that, in my opinion, like Niels Bohr used to say. It's the best attempt we have that, you know, to describe what is out there. It's the, it's the best shot yeah. that we have at reconstructing this, and it's actually coming, all these concepts, electrons, quarks, fields, uh, is all coming from the biology of our brains. Mm -hmm.